Hey everyone and welcome back. So in our last video, I went over uh, just a couple of really rough prototypes and just showcasing how Smart Animate can work in a couple different uh, scenarios, both with uh, matching layers and using separate animations or just using Smart Animate altogether. So I wanna just showcase how I've built this little application out. And uh, maybe they'll give you some inspiration for our project. I mean, you'll get these files and uh, what I would do is the files that you've started to create and I just like visually explore with in terms of like the high fidelity designs we're creating for Habitual, go ahead and put those together. Start making interactions, start thinking about like different screen transitions and stuff like that. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of fun with this kind of stuff because it really brings your uh, prototypes to life. So let's jump right in. So I have a couple of uh, similar screens here. I have um, this kind of primary nav. Let's actually just jump out of the prototyping uh, view. I have this kind of secondary nav up here and you can see there's portrait, there's nature, there's architecture, and I've created different uh, screens for that. So I have nature over here, I have architecture, and this is the architecture screen, this is the nature screen. So this is just an app for photos that I just put together really, really quickly. And what's going to happen here is when I swipe through here, there's gonna be a little animation that happens there, but also the content's going to change in a really nice way. Let's go over here. So let's uh, click our prototype tab. And what I have selected here is I just have a smart animation. So we're not changing anything in the screen, like we're not having any screen transitions. What I am having though, is I'm making sure that when I click this button, or this, uh, this text, it's going to slide over. So it's going to capture that movement and it's going to capture the fill. So it's going to turn to a dark black. I mean, I don't think you get darker than black, but it's going to turn to a black. And the images, they're all gonna stay in the same place, but we're gonna change the fill of the images. So we're gonna have a nice transition with that. And that's the same thing with architecture as well. So we're gonna have that nice little animation uh, that's going to happen up here. And it's going to have uh, just the feedback for the fill, uh, just sort of the pictures over here that are gonna change the architecture. So that is one of the main interactions that we prototype over here. And let's go take a look at what that looks like. Let's just select our device. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to scale to fit so we can see everything. So we got the nice movement, we get the nice fill. Beautiful, so if we just click that, I've set it so if I just click, I go back. If we really wanted to kind of animate it to the best possible thing that we can, we would just use like a drag. We could do that as well and just kind of like hijack that horizontal scroll. So that way nature just stops over there on the next screen. So it's another possibility, but it's just nice and subtle. Users get the feedback they need for each transition. And there's good, good animation over here in terms of just the duration of the fill. So I really like that. I'm going to show you um, another interaction. So what we have here as well is when a user clicks on an image, I don't just want that to be instantaneous. I want to smart animate right to that image. So I wanted to kind of take up the whole screen. All the other layers will just be removed. These will be new layers. And I wanna see that feedback of that transition of uh, the image going to the very top of the screen. So these, as you can tell, they are rectangle two and rectangle two, and they are both named the exact same. And this should just animate to the top and the rest of the content will appear gradually. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I click on this, so all the rest of the content just dissolves in and I have everything there. So let's take a look at what that looks like again. So if I click home and I go back, I mean, we could actually place a back button here too to do the same thing. So that's really nice. I mean, it's not too fast. So I have 400 milliseconds on the actual uh, duration and I have an ease in and out. So that means it's gonna take its time going in and it's gonna take its time 
kind of um, coming out. So, I mean, when it starts the animation, when it ends the animation, it's going to have a nice like in and out and it's not going to be too abrupt. So let's take a look at what that looks like one more time. Really beautiful. Boom. Okay. I have another smart animation. I've done it on a drag. So what's going to happen here is when the user drags on these similar uh, photos, I want to go to this screen. Now we could hypothetically just have a horizontal scroll on these, but we could hijack the scroll like we've done here and it will show a new set of items. And I'll show you what that looks like. I've done the exact same thing. I've on dragged it. As you can see, the frame is bleeding off of the main mobile frame. You can see it over here. So if I just kind of bring that, hmm. So it's uh, very interesting how that's not working properly. But so when I actually slide this, it's going to drag to this again. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I can see it looks really nice. I bring that back and I can slide it back. So it's just going back between screens now, but the great thing about this is with a horizontal scroll, you can't really stop it nicely. This kind of just hijacks that scroll and puts it in place. So that's a great way to show off that type of animation. Like these are great for working closely with developers because they'll be able to see how things are supposed to work. Because with a horizontal scroll, you'll never catch something like this. So if it's beyond 50%, of the space of the width, then it should automatically slide like that. If it isn't, then it shouldn't. So that's something really, really interesting in terms of uh, a little animation that we made there. Now, another one is a subtle animation with the heart. So what I've done is I've created another screen with that heart fill. And when I click that, it's just gonna smart animate, it's gonna be very subtle, and the fill's gonna change there. And it will also pop a little GIF that I've created. Sorry, it's a little pixelated, but I've created this in uh, Fig Motion, which is a plugin for Figma, and we're gonna get into micro interactions in our next lesson, uh, but I wanna give you a sneak peek of what we can kind of do here. Because micro interactions are a form of animation and they use motion, so we're gonna get into that as well, but, so clicking this uh, little uh, heart here is a micro interaction. Same with like interacting with this type of nav. So I'm going to click this and it's going to fill the heart and it's going to pop this little notification ball that's going to bounce up and down. So I'm keeping my animations very, very subtle, but I'm also kind of adhering to all those rules we talked about. Things about state transition, so like we've seen with moving between these different types of uh, navigation items and also moving from this screen to this screen. So beautiful state transitions. We also have visual cues. So this is gonna be a visual cue in terms of clicking this heart and getting that feedback. That's also a part of visual feedback as well. So when I click this, I'm gonna get great feedback and another cue over here is this little notification that's going to pop up. So let's take a look at what this whole prototype looks like from here onward. So I can see I can click that. So very nice. And we have our little tiny subtle animation bouncing in the background, letting users know, hey, click me, I have something for you to look at. So let's remove that and it's gone and it's there. So really nice, really subtle that it's not instantaneous. It doesn't look really like jumbled or anything like that. So that is a way that you can use Smart Animate to just make certain interactions look really nice, bring your prototypes to life, and just to showcase what you're thinking as a designer. I know it can be really tough with animations, and I think up until this point, jumping between so many different plugins, jumping between different applications. Figma has really found something amazing here. They have something really special with the way you can just smart animate and create these different uh, screen transitions within the same product. In our next lesson, we're gonna jump right into micro interactions. And I'm gonna get to what they are, I'm gonna talk about why they're so important, and we're gonna create our own. So go out there, have some fun with like creating these smart animations. 
with your own examples in terms of like, you can use this if you want, you can create your own app, but I urge you to use the app that we're building as a way that we can create just different interactions like that and you know, just work on different screen transitions and uh, different transitions in general. So go out there and have some fun. Our next lesson, we're gonna learn about micro interactions.